is Lindor with Watery Wishes. Now today I'm back with a Slumber Party invite set and we are going to be using the Slumber Party stamp set and it's coordinating dies from Simon Says Stamp. The Falling Star stencil, some oxide inks in picked raspberry, black soot, wild honey, wilted violet and some Nouveau Glimmer Paste in Moonstone. Now, while this stamp set is discontinued, you could use lots of other stamp sets or dies to create a slumber party invite set. It just has to be a childlike image. You could use the picture book dies, any of the animals from Simon Says Stamp, you could use you could use the adorable elephants from MFT or even the uh, Mermazing stamp set from MFT or the new best friends all would work now for these cards today I'm using card bases a2 card bases using Nina 110 pound cardstock. They will be side folding portrait cards, and the panel that I'm ink blending on is uh, Nina 80 pound. I chose to use the Nina instead of Bristol Smooth because I'm going to be fairly heavy handed and the Bristol Smooth is a little bit more expensive and it's sort of unnecessary when you're this, going to be this heavy handed with the inks to use the Bristol Smooth. So I opted to use the Nina instead. Now as these, this invite set is going to be for my niece and she, she's gone off pink. I only used the pink to help blend in the wilted violet and to create that orange colour with the wild honey. And using the pink makes sure that you don't get like a, a brown colour in between where the orange and the uh, wilted violet blends. Although it did darken a little bit right there on the edge of the blending. But it's not too bad. Now once I've got everything moved off of my Simon Says stamp desk pad I'll pull out I've got like an acrylic sheet that I'll pull out so that I can spray water onto the panel and then I'll also flick a little bit of water on off my acrylic block. Now while I'm making three of these cards I'm only going to be showing you the one. Now I'm going to adhere this stencil to the paper by using a little bit of uh, painter's tape on the back. Now, with this glimmer paste, in a stencil, especially a, a stencil like this, less is more. You don't need much and once you have it done, you need to clean your stencil and your tools as soon as possible. This stuff sets like concrete and once it sets, you'll have a hell of a time trying to get it off. Now, I've put all of the stamps from the stamp set into my Misty because I'm doing this multiple times. And I'm stamping with Memento Tuxedo Black Ink because I intend on colouring the images with my Copic markers. I'm using a microfiber cloth so that I can rub against the top of the misty while I put pressure down 
and this being the very first time I stamped this set it came out very good for a first time stamping now I didn't put all the colouring in here because I am by no means a colourist if you are interested in watching colourists make cards you should definitely check out Kelly Latavola and uh, Sandy Almock. Sandy Almock has classes that you can sign up for and she will teach you how to use your Copics. She also has a hex chart available which puts your Copic, like when you fill it out, it puts your Copics in an order of the colours that they're similar to rather than their blending sets. It's a very, very handy tool if you have Copic markers. Now, here I am using the tip to tip method because I'm too lazy to reach over and get out my E15. And this is something you can do if you don't have an in-between color or a mid-tone. You can create one by just putting your lightest color to the tip of your darker color and using your markers that way. Now, for the hair, I'm going to start mapping out my shadow colors where the hair is going to be darkest but I'm going to do that with my lightest color because if I mess up and I don't think it's good then it's easy to fix. And then I go in with my next darkest color working light to dark and then back down to light. I'm using flicking motions. This is something that I learned from watching Kelly Latavola. She's a great colorist and she's a crack up to listen to so if you haven't checked out Kelly's videos you should definitely do so. Now I've left quite a bit of white purposefully to give the impression of highlights but I felt there was just a little bit too much on that side so I went back in added a little, little bit more darker color blended it out and that's good enough. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. Now, when I'm doing the skin tones, don't be afraid to use a color that's got a darker, different undertone hue. Here I'm using a brown that's ready toned. And by itself it looks quite drastic, but once you blend it out, it really just looks like shadow on pale skin and if you want to learn more about colouring in skin tones definitely check out Sandy Almock. She has a series on how to colour different skin tones and it's, it's really good. You really should check her out if you're interested in varying up your skin tones. Now here I've cut a quarter of an inch off of the ink blended panel and half inch strips to paste onto the side of the card base to give a little bit of interest in the background. Here I'm deciding what side I want to put it on. There is no right or wrong, it's just what you feel looks best at the time. I've seen it done both ways and both ways look fine. I've seen it put on both sides of the card and that looks good too. Now I'm going to use some foam tape to adhere this panel. Now this foam, foam tape I bought from Amazon and it's about half as thick as the 3M foam and it seems to feel a little bit stickier to the fingers and the good thing about using a foam tape that's not quite as thick it means you can pop up more elements on your card and still have it go through the mail. 
Now the reason I only half peel those outer edges is it gives me a little bit of leeway just in case I don't put it on correctly and it also gives me somewhere to hold the panel without having my fingers stick to it as I'm putting it down. Now here I'm seeing what placement looks best on the card. Faffing about as you do, trying to see which angles for which items look best. Now I'm thinking about how I'm going to place my sentiment. I plan to stack it in the bottom right corner. But later on, I decide to run it right along the bottom of the panel. Now that I've figured out the placement, I'm going to start adhering the images down with some tacky glue. And because I have the glimmer paste, they didn't want to stick real well, so I pulled out my acrylic block and used that to hold them down a bit, just so that they would adhere better to the card. Now I have to wait so I can stick that last little star on. And now I'll get the Misty back out for my sentiment. Now Simon Says Stamp has these acetate grid sheets that are brilliant for testing out and placement of, of sentiments. You get to see exactly on your card where the sentiment's going to be. And they're also good if you've got, if your stamps aren't quite clean. You just have to be careful with your fingers if you get a bit of ink on them. But uh, now I've got that in. And I'll stamp that with some Versamark ink. And then I'll heat emboss that with some sparkling silver from Hero Arts. Now, when you're heat embossing, you really need to use an anti-static powder tool. Sometimes you can get away without not using it, but it's definitely recommended to use it. And while I am stamping this sentiment three times, I'm only showing it to you the once. Now I'm heating up my heat tool before I put it to the embossing powder and then melting the embossing powder. Now here I'm straightening up the sentiments because I stamped them slightly crooked and once I've done this I'll trim off the excess at the end of the apostrophe of party and though you can't see it I am trimming it off at the slightest angle to make that straight at a 90 degree angle to the way I cut the sentiments to fix the the way that they were running um, so that they weren't wonky. Now I'm going to adhere that down with some more of that foam tape and then I'll just turn the card over and cut the excess off. Now I'm going to stamp the sentiment on the inside of the card. I am going to do this with the wilted violet 
which is the purple color that I used on the front of the card. I'm going to use the popcorn image as well as I didn't use the popcorn on the front of the card. And this sentiment reads, we deserve a break. Now I'm just doing some finishing touches with my jelly roll pen, putting the dots on the sleep mask, on the hearts, the nail polish bottle, the noses, and just the highlights in her eyes. And that's the finished cards. I really enjoyed making this card set for my niece and I'm absolutely sure that she will be tickled pink and thrilled to get these to give to her friends. So I hope you enjoyed watching me make this card set as much as I enjoyed making it and if you like my videos please subscribe and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Have fun crafting your imagination. Bye.